Good evening and welcome to Brunswick Beat. I'm Laura Lewis. And I'm Rachel Johnson. In our leading story tonight, a Calabash strip mall has burned to the ground on Carter Drive in the heart of Calabash. The strip mall was gutted by quickly spreading flames early Monday morning. Flames were already shooting through the roof of 947 Bistro and Pub and quickly spreading to adjoining businesses when firefighters arrived. The small block of businesses that also housed Headhunter Barbershop, Calabash Florist, and Reflection Stained Glass was a total loss. There were no injuries, and the cause of the fire is under investigation. Former Commissioner Charles Warren filed a civil suit in the U.S. District Court in Wilmington March 12th against current County Commissioners Phil Norris, Marty Cook, Scott Phillips, and Pat Sykes. Former Commissioner Bill Sue, County Manager Marty Lawing, and County Attorney Huey Marshall. Warren claims the Board of Commissioners is guilty of gross misconduct, conspiracy to deny due process rights of county employees, and used harassment, retaliation, and intimidation to silence him when he refused to be complicit with the other board members' actions. Warren seeks a full investigation of his charges by the U.S. Marshals Service from outside Brunswick County. Marshals said the officials involved would not comment on the case outside of a courtroom. Area law enforcement have united with the common goal of eliminating driving while impaired on the county's roadways. A newly formed task force called the Brunswick Interagency Task Force Enforcement Team has taken to the roads. Last Friday, 17 people were arrested on DWI charges at a major checkpoint at the Brunswick River Bridge in Leland. The task force hopes to have major checkpoints on a weekly basis throughout the county. Last year, there were eight driving while impaired fatal wrecks in Brunswick County. So far this year, the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office has issued 123 DWI citations. During the same period last year, there were only 19 DWI arrests. For more on this week's story, pick up this week's beacon. A suspect is still sought in connection with the November robbery of a sweepstakes business in Carolina Shores. Xavier Arturo Genret was previously among suspects charged in the robbery, then was released. The Brunswick County Sheriff's Office is seeking to have him rearrested in connection with the case. Anyone who may know of Genret's whereabouts is asked to contact the Brunswick County Sheriff's Office at 910-253-2777. Less than 25 years after being sentenced to life in prison in Brunswick County Superior Court, a man convicted of a first-degree sexual offense has been released on parole. David Bullard, 62, was convicted on June 6, 1988, of a first-degree sexual offense for his role in a sexual assault on July 2, 1987. Bullard was found guilty, along with a co-defendant, for assaulting a female victim. Both men forced the victim to perform fellatio on them by force and against her will. On March 17, 2013, Bullard became eligible for parole and was approved by the North Carolina Post-Release Supervision and Parole Commission. County commissioners still uncomfortable with pay raise options received from a consultant chose to put a cap on the amount they are willing to spend at a special meeting March 18th. Finance Director Ann Hardy advised the commissioners whatever amount they decide to spend on salaries increases another 34 percent to account for benefits. County Manager Marty Lawing then advised the board to pick an amount they are willing to spend and let the consultant shape the plan to that spending cap. Commissioner Marty Cook was not able to attend, so the remaining board members did not vote on a final decision. Guilford County's commissioners could vote Thursday to offer Brunswick County Manager Marty Lawing their open manager position. Lawing confirmed he is a candidate for the position on Monday. He refused to discuss what decision he would make if he were selected as the top candidate. Guilford County's nearly half a million residents dwarfs Brunswick County's population of just 100,000. Guilford operates with a much higher budget, $491 million, compared to Brunswick County's $196 million budget. Brunswick County commissioners said they have not discussed what would be done if lawing leaves Brunswick County. A seminar about wind farming drew a small crowd of people Saturday to Ocean Isle Beach. Jen Banks, Wind Project Coordinator with the North Carolina Solar Center, spoke about the possibility of establishing a wind farm off the North Carolina coast, which has drawn interest from some entities like Dominion Power in Virginia. Sunset Beach Mayor Richard Serrato and Councilwoman Carol Scott expressed concern about the visual effects of windmills installed off the coast and the effects that would have on ocean views and tourism. You can read more about this story and lots of others inside this week's Beacon. Now let's head over to Jim Cochran with the Weather and Surf Report.
Thanks, Laura. Happy spring, everybody. The weather seems to be cooling off as we head into the weekend with highs in the mid-50s heading into Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are expected to be mostly cloudy with the chance of showers. But the good news is temperatures are anticipated to reach the lower 60s in the early part of next week before they cool off again heading into the midweek. Here's the surf going into the week. Overall, surf for the region looks to be pretty small scale for most of the week, with Sunday looking to be the best bet so far, with knee-high east-southeast short period swell in the morning and building a bit in the afternoon with occasional sets up to stomach high. However, it will be choppy with northeast winds at 15 to 20 miles per hour in the morning, shifting east for the afternoon. And there will possibly be some remaining swell uh, around Monday, Monday morning, if you're up for a little dawn patrol. Now let's take a look at this week's tide times. Now let's head back to Rachel with the latest sports report and have a great week, Brunswick County. Thanks, Jim. Welcome to the Beacon Sports Report. Head coach Mike Alderson has spent much of the last two weeks tinkering with several lineups as his veteran-laden West Brunswick baseball squad suffered a pair of lopsided losses during the early stages of the 2013 season. The Trojans claimed a 14-1 victory over the Scorpions Friday night in Shalot, thanks largely in part to an 11-run outburst in the fourth frame. The West Brunswick High School softball team beat North Brunswick 7-0, scoring all of its runs with two outs in a conference game Friday at West. The Trojans scored five runs with two outs in the sixth inning and breaking open a close game. Four of those runs were unearned, scoring after the left fielder dropped a fly ball that would have ended the inning 3-0. West Brunswick was host to South Brunswick, Whiteville, and South Columbus in a season-opening track meet March 14th, and the Trojans won both the girls' and boys' meets. In the girls' meet, West beat South 97-96, getting the winning points by a second-place finish in the 1600 relay during the final event. Find all these stories and more great photos inside this week's sports section of the Beacon. Family fun is planned for an Easter egg hunt scheduled for 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. this Saturday, March 23rd in Calabash Town Park. The free event is sponsored by River of Life Baptist Church. Highlights include hot dogs, drinks, games, crafts, and an egg hunt for different age groups. There will also be an opportunity for children to have free pictures taken with the Easter Bunny. In the event of rain, this event will be rescheduled for March 30th. For more information, check the church website at riveroflifebaptistchurch.com or call 910-575-6377. Calabash Town Park is on Persimmon Road at Traders Lane in Calabash. Boiling Spring Lakes is heating up this Saturday with its fourth annual Fire in the Lakes Festival. It will be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Boiling Spring Lakes Community Center at 1 Leeds Road in Boiling Spring Lakes. The event celebrates controlled burning to preserve wildlife and plants, including the region's unique Venus flytrap. Highlights include a controlled burn demonstration, a fire equipment display, Smokey the Bear, games, food, live music, and animals. St. Brendan's Catholic Church in Shalot is celebrating the season with its third annual spring Easter craft fair and bake sale this weekend to benefit the hungry. The two-day event will take place noon to 6 p.m. Saturday and 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sunday at the church at 5101 Ocean Highway West. Highlights include more than 50 arts and crafts vendors and a bake sale. Seniors at the Ash Senior Site are enjoying attending their newly refurnished site. Brunswick Senior Resources and Summer Home Furniture work together to revamp the center. New furniture arrived last week and seniors are saying it makes the site more inviting and a place they want to hang out. The Ash Senior Site is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This week, Brunswick Beacon Advertising Representative Ann Hewitt dropped by Totally Chic in Calabash and chatted with owner Karen Hardy. Let's head out to Calabash and see what's happening. Hi, I'm Ann Hewitt, Advertising Representative from the Brunswick Beacon, and I'm here with the beautiful Karen Hardy, owner and master stylist at Totally Chic Salon and Spa in Calabash. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today, oh, Karen. Do, Anne, for I appreciate us. it. We understand recently you just won many awards in our Brunswick Beacons Best of Contest. Can you tell me a little bit about what you won? Well, we've been um, honored with the um, first place for the salon and first place with facials and third for nails. And I also um, 
one first for hairstylist. That's a huge accomplishment as far as I'm concerned, considering there are so many salons in Brunswick County. Um, tell me a little bit about what the salon offers. We offer um, nails, facials, massages. Um, <clears throat> we also do waxing, we do body wraps, color, everything. How long has Totally Chic been in Calabash and can you tell me a little bit about your staff? We've been um, here 18 years. We have an unbelievable, wonderful staff of 12 mm -hmm. people that are extremely talented. Everybody just combines all their talents together, which makes us just an incredible team. And we wouldn't be where we are without having the team that we have because you can't get to the top without an unbelievable team behind you. So we're just very blessed with that. Absolutely, I feel like that too. In my job, you have to have everyone working together as one to, to be successful like you guys are. Are you accepting new clients right now? We're always accepting new clients. We always have new ones that come in and the area is still growing, which is wonderful. So we're always Absolutely. accepting. We may not be able to take them right then and there, but we're always accepting new clients. How can they reach you? If they can um, call us at 910-579-1035. And the location address is 9188 Beach Drive in Calabash. And our website is www.totallychicsalonspa.com. Well, Karen, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you for speaking with us Thank today. You. Now let's head out to the Brunswick County Animal Shelter with Laura as she visits with one of the dogs available for adoption. Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm out at Brunswick County Animal Shelter today with volunteer Rick Summers, and he just got through walking a new dog. And Rick, what can you tell us about this dog? Uh, this is Tucker. She, he's a two-year-old pit bull mix. Uh, got great color, fed well, really healthy, walks great. Just a loving dog. I mean, just really needs a nice home. Mm -hmm. He is a sweet, sweet boy. And he would make a good pet for oh, her, just oh, about anybody. anybody. He, he's good with other dogs. He doesn't bark at them. And he's just a really good dog. And oh, as you can see, he's got great color. Oh. You can do anything you want. You can lift his face up and he doesn't care. He will not bite. A very good looking boy. And he's brindle in color, I believe it said yeah. on his information. So he's about one or two years old. Yeah, he's only been here for about a little over a week. And He's going to get a dog. He's just a really good dog. He is a sweetheart. So you need to come on out and visit with Tucker and visit with all the other dogs and cats available for adoption. The shelter is open for visitation six days a week now, Mondays through Saturdays. So come on out. They would love to see you, and they would be happy to help you find your new pet. And I thank you so much, well, thank Rick. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. And thanks to Tucker, too. There are always so many loving animals at the shelter. We're out of time for tonight, but you can read all these stories and much more in this week's Beacon. If you have comments or suggestions for us at Brunswick Beat, you can email us at brunswickbeat at brunswickbeacon.com. Don't forget to follow the Beacon on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for Brunswick Beacon. Thank you for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next week for a new edition of Brunswick Beat, Brunswick County's only television news show. We close out this week's show with images from people enjoying last weekend's warm weather on area beaches.